what is lividity? Lividity is a, it's pressure. Basically, whatever you fall or rest, um, like here, you know, it'll leave a pattern. And it'll leave a pattern of whatever this material is made of or on the carpet, anything like that. If you're lying uh, on a set of keys, you know, that, that is removed and those keys marks will stay. Usually within three, four, five, seven hours, it, it becomes fixed lividity. It tells you a story about whether the body's moved or not. And rigor mortis does the same thing. Rigor mortis is when the body stiffens up. Now the scholars have written volumes on it. So many hours, 48, this, that, the other. Rigor mortis um, is 12 in, 12 out, usually. Normal circumstances, it takes 12 in, uh, and you, it's hard to break within that 12 hours. Once the 12 hours, it's getting into 17, 18, you can break it. Uh, again, that'll tell you if the body's been moved. So here's a, uh, an example. Three players, the granddaughter, Auntie Betty, Uncle Bob, okay, at the house. And on Thursday morning, Betty takes her to school. Done that since she was a little thing. She's about seven now. Uncle Bob, he's bad. He's got diabetes, he's ill. He's got everything wrong with him. Uh, COPD, he was a smoker and a drinker but he's being cared for by Betty, she loves him, he's not in a nursing home, so she's taking care of him 24 hours a day. Except Wednesday night and Thursday, she spends with the granddaughter. Um, she makes his breakfast, she leaves the house around seven in the morning. Uh, she takes the, the granddaughter to school, then she goes to get her hair done, does this, does that, does shopping, comes home around six o'clock at night. That's nearly 12 hours. She comes home, and she finds Uncle Bob on the floor. He's on top of the keys, cell phone lighter. But anyway, he's lying on top of all this stuff, like this. Betty comes home, finds him. She's a big woman, she rolls him over, and he is like this. I come at around 7.30, 8 o'clock, after the paramedics have been, I arrive. He's lying on the floor, covered by a sheet. I look him over. He's got marks on his face. What the hell is that? Aha, it's the keys, lividity. Betty, when you came, how did you find him? He was face down, he was prone. And you rolled him over, she said it. I rolled him over. I'm gonna do it. Not in front of her, but I'm going to start breaking the rigor mortis. There's no trauma. I'm going to straighten them out. Break all that because it's in that 12 hour range. So what happened? She goes, well, when I left, he, was, I, he had his mug of tea. I said, yeah, well, how much tea has he drank? She goes, oh, it's over here in the dining room. He's got half a cup. Yeah, how many cups does he have? Well, usually he drinks about three cups. Drinks them within a couple of hours. Well, there's still tea in the teapot, and he's got half a cup of tea. So that gives me a window. And also that I mentioned was guilt. Now, she's already told me that, oh, if I hadn't went out and took the, school, took the baby to school and get my hair done and everything. And I know by just looking at the body, it's telling me when he died. He died very early in the morning. She got back at six. Um, so there's nothing she could have done. She had to take the, the little girl to school. That was a given. She did it every Thursday morning. And uh, so he, he died. I can honestly say that he, he died not long after she left the house. So it puts her at ease. She isn't going to be thinking about that. Oh, he, you know, if I'd have got back sooner, if I'd have got back at 11 or 12 o'clock, oh, I stayed out all day. So he, he died not long after she left the house. Life goes on, obla de obla da. There was things she had to do. She was taking care of him 24 hours a day, but she had to take the little girl to school. So I, it made me feel better um, knowing that she's not going to have that guilt.